If you believe in these retirement planning myths, then you might be making your path to achieving your dream retirement a lot harder than it needs to be. Whether you're continuing to work longer than you really need to, or it just causes you to overcomplicate your path to retirement to the point of frustration, it could be because you are planning your retirement based on one of the five retirement planning myths that we're going to cover in this video. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jonathan Rankin from Theorem Wealth Management, where our goal is to help you maximize your retirement. I've been helping people plan and achieve their retirement goals for going on two decades now. And I've seen firsthand how someone can become so overwhelmed with retirement planning, all because they are stuck with these beliefs about retirement that are nothing but a myth. And I wanna help you avoid that thought so that planning for your retirement can become a lot easier. So myth number one, I need a million dollars to retire. One of the most common retirement planning myths is the idea that you need a million dollars to retire. Now, this is a very common thought because of how much coverage there is around this topic. I mean, there are constant headlines and articles that talk about having a million dollars to retire and what it looks like. And to be fair, even we did a video discussing whether or not a million dollars is enough to retire. The reality is the amount of money you need to retire is dependent on your individual circumstances, goals, and lifestyle. And I've seen so many people retire with a lot less than a million dollars. The problem with believing this myth is that it creates the wrong target for retirement. Getting to some arbitrary number does not consider what you actually need to retire, and it could possibly delay your retirement for years while you wait to get to this magical number. I once watched someone delay their retirement for five years because they had in their mind that they needed to get to a $2 million portfolio to retire. So they stayed in their job despite the fact they wanted to retire. In fact, they even had plans to buy a second home for the summers, and they had a list of places that they wanted to travel to once they actually retired. Even though every retirement model that we would run showed that they can retire and not have to worry about money, there was this belief that was ingrained in their mind that they wouldn't be successful unless they got to that $2 million mark. Now, they eventually got there, retired, and after a few years, there were some health complications that prevented them from traveling like they had originally planned. I know this is a unique circumstance, but it's something to keep in mind because hitting a magic number might provide some comfort, but all too often it could cause you to delay the retirement that you dream about. And it's important to understand how much income you need and what income sources that you might have coming in. Because retirement itself is changing with how many people are retiring to something as opposed to from something. So on top of social security and your savings, maybe you have a pension that you are drawing income from or some rental income, or nowadays even part-time employment that can help you achieve your retirement without getting to some magic number. Brings us to myth number two, social security is going bankrupt. This is a very common belief because of the headlines that are out there and how easy it is to politicize this program. The thought that social security could just go away can be scary for a lot of people. But in reality, it's just fear mongering by the media to get you to tune in so they can get higher ratings and sell more ad space. The truth is, yes, there is a deficit that social security is running at right now. And they project that by 2035, taxes will be enough to pay only 75% of scheduled benefits. This is straight from the Social Security Administration's website. They're very transparent about it. They're not hiding the fact that in 2035, benefits might have to be reduced. No matter what, it's still frustrating to think about your benefits decreasing by 25% when you spend your entire career paying into the system that you expect to be there for you, and then eventually your benefits become reduced. But that is the worst case scenario. This is something that will have to be resolved in Washington. And if you wanna learn more about possible changes to the social security program, make sure you check out this video right here that I'll link to that we covered on the different possibilities of how social security might be fixed. But delaying your retirement or worrying about whether or not social security will be there for you is something that can make retirement planning a lot more challenging. And it's just not true. That brings us to myth number three. I will spend less in retirement. Now, it is easy to think that when you retire, you're naturally going to spend less money. But in reality, it rarely happens. Over the course of your retirement, you're naturally going to spend less, but it's not immediate. In fact, what we have found is that there are four stages of retirement spending that you might experience. The first stage, this is a transition stage. This is where you might transition to part-time work or to a different retirement job. And during this stage, spending typically stays the same. It's often because there's comfort in knowing that there's some sort of income coming in, even if it's just part-time and that you're not relying solely on your savings. Now, the second stage, this is where you stop working altogether. That comfort level is now gone, but what replaces that comfort level is attempting to fill the days of the week with something to do. And most people don't retire just to go sit at home and 
As much as we all enjoy binging shows on Netflix, that's not really the purpose of retirement. Now, this is where spending might actually increase because this is where you're taking those trips that you want to take or maybe you spend time on home renovations that you wanted to get done when you actually had the time to do it. In stage three, this is the slowdown phase and that happens typically when you get older and it's caused by health. This is where spending actually starts to decline on leisure activities, but medical costs likely increase. And the last stage is often the most expensive stage of retirement. These are the last two years of life. That's because long-term care and medical costs increase. Now, unless you have a specific spending plan on how you're going to reduce your spending dramatically, I would plan on modest cuts over time as opposed to thinking that you're just going to retire and immediately start spending less money. That brings us to myth number four. Medicare will cover all my medical expenses. Now, Medicare covers some healthcare costs, but not all medical expenses. Now, it's a really valuable program, but it wasn't designed to cover everything. For example, deductibles and co-payments, which can be pretty significant, as well as the cost of dental, vision, hearing conditions, all those things aren't covered. And when you factor in your coverage for nursing home and other long-term care, Medicare coverage is pretty limited. In fact, according to the Fidelity Retiree Healthcare Cost Estimate, an average couple 65 years old in 2022 might need about $315,000 saved after taxes to cover the cost of health expenses in retirement. So whether it's supplemental insurance, long-term care insurance, or just self-funding, it's best to have a plan for an increase in medical expenses above and beyond what Medicare covers. This brings us to myth number five. But before we get to that, if you found this video useful, can you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button? It really helps us out to continue to put out content just like this. So myth number five, a Roth IRA is better than a traditional IRA. Now, this topic has gotten extremely popular over the past few years, especially as the market has fallen and there's been a lot more coverage in the media about Roth conversions. This is one aspect of retirement planning that people often get confused on and make overly complicated, when in reality, it's pretty straightforward. And to understand which one is better than the other, let's first go through the differences between the two account types. So a traditional IRA or traditional 401k allows you to make tax deductible contributions, which reduce your taxable income for the year. And the money in the account grows tax free until you start withdrawing that money during retirement. At that point, all withdrawals are taxes, ordinary income. On the other hand, a Roth IRA or nowadays a Roth 401k those accounts don't offer a tax deduction up front for contributions, but said contributions are made with after-tax dollars. Now, the money in the account does grow tax-free and withdrawals are tax-free as well. So this is a great tool because in retirement, you can take all the money you want out and it doesn't have any sort of tax implication whatsoever. Now, unlike a traditional IRA or traditional 401k, there are no RMDs for Roth IRAs, which means you can leave the money in the account for as long as you want. Now, both accounts have their pros and cons, but to simplify the decision, it really comes down to answering the question, will your income tax rate be higher now while you're working or later on in retirement? If you think your tax rate is going to be higher while you're working, then go with a traditional IRA or 401k because that would be best. If not, then maybe a Roth might be the best way to go. That's it. That's all that matters in the decision-making process. The whole goal here is to pay Uncle Sam less money. Now, I know that it's hard to determine whether or not your future tax rate will be higher or lower than it is today. On top of that, maybe you're living in a state that has a high income tax rate today, but ultimately your plan is to move to a different state that has a substantially lower tax rate. While the thought of having this large sum of money in an account that's never going to be taxed sounds appealing, you really just want to think about your tax rate today versus in retirement. If you aren't in a lower tax bracket or you're not in the top tax brackets, but instead you find yourself somewhere in the middle and unsure of where your taxes are gonna be later in retirement, there is nothing wrong with doing both. There is no rule that says you can only contribute to one type of account so long as you meet the IRS criteria. With that said, there is one reason why I typically lean towards the traditional IRA or traditional 401k as opposed to the Roth, and that is optionality. When you contribute to a traditional account, you can control when you pay your taxes. You have the option over time to convert those funds into a Roth account and be very intentional about what taxes you are paying. For example, if there's ever a period in your future where your income is lower, you can use that time to convert those funds from your traditional account into a Roth account at a lower tax rate. I've seen clients do this all the time when they are temporarily retiring, knowing that at some point they're going to go back and do some contract work or part-time work, 
or clients who have sold their businesses and they just decide to take a few years before they return to the workforce. These are great years to be able to convert some of those funds at a very low tax rate. The reality is there is no one size fits all solution that's always better or always worse than the other. It's really dependent on your circumstances and ultimately your tax rate today versus your tax rate in retirement. Now all five of these retirement planning myths are very common and easy to believe, but knowing that they are just that, nothing more than a myth, can hopefully make retirement planning for you a lot easier. If you are planning on retiring soon, there are four habits that you wanna make sure that you can avoid that can ruin your retirement. And see what those are, make sure you check out the video that's coming up next, and I will see you there.